The Raspberry Pi is a credit card size 25 US dollar microcomputer that we created here in Cambridge to, uh, to try and teach children to program, to try to give them some of those experiences that we had in the 1980s on our Commodore 64s and our BBC Micros. The Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, there were a group of us at the, uh, at the university who'd all experienced this trend of declining year-on-year -year applications for computer science and a sort of a dis declining level of skill um, in, the, in the people, you know, not a declining level of intelligence, but a declining level of skill um, in the people uh, who were arriving at the age of 18 to study computer science. And so this group of us at the university um, we started to ask ourselves what had happened. We started to ask ourselves why we were seeing so many fewer people than we were a decade before. And we had this idea that it was the, uh, that the, the 8 bit microcomputers of the 1980s had been our source of students. And as those had gone away, we lost our students. And then we started to ask ourselves could we make a device maybe to fill that niche that was now empty? Dave has been working on high altitude ballooning for a long time. He's been doing sending payloads up under weather balloons for I think three or four years now. Uh, he was a very early Pi adopter. Uh, he was sending Pies up under balloons within two or three months of launch, uh, of the launch of the product. Um, and uh, yeah, we gradually, I mean, it's, it's, he, he takes these photos. The big thing the Pi has enabled him to do is to take photos and send down photos in real time um, uh, from altitude. Uh, and so we started, you know, we started going over to see him, you know, he started putting these amazing photographs online that he'd taken with the Pi. We started going over to see him. And then once we, we launched a range of merchandising about a year ago, of which Babbage is a, uh, Babbage is one small example. We have, you know, t-shirts and coasters and all of these things, but Babbage is our, is our mascot. Um, and Dave, after the Felix Baumgartner 39-kilometer um, um, skydive, uh, he suggested, well, you know, can we try and beat, can we try and beat Felix, even if it's only by 10 or 20 metres? Can we try and beat Felix with the bear? We launched him on two successive days. The first day, I think the, the, uh, the Sunday, it was the bank holiday weekend. I think the Sunday we launched him uh, and he wouldn't let go. Uh, he had a cut-down mechanism that was supposed to drop him off. He had a little capsule and he had a cut-down mechanism that was supposed to drop him and the cut-down mechanism didn't fire. So Liz and I were there for that and we recovered Babbage, who was still clinging to his capsule. We recovered Babbage from a cornfield somewhere in Oxfordshire. Uh, and then uh, we came back to Cambridge and the next day Dave was, uh, was able to get a successful shot. There's actually a pie inside Babbage um, and you know, it's been hollowed out. Um, uh, it's kind of a, quite a brutal. We, know that we now know Babbage is a child safe toy because the amount of effort involved in getting him open, getting his stuffing out is, is pretty substantial. So yeah, he's got a pie inside him that's got a GPS and a radio. Um, so you, you go out, we went out and we're driving around the fields of Oxfordshire in a 4x4, kind of trying to home in on this GPS signal. We'd love to send a Raspberry Pi into space. One of the nice things about the, the um, environment at 40 kilometers up is that, um, uh, we, is that it's effectively the same as the environment in orbit uh, in terms of temperature and pressure. Um, so the fact that the Pi was able to survive that gives us some confidence uh, that at least for low Earth orbit applications, the Pi would work. We don't have any plans at the moment. Uh, we do talk to the occasional person about this. Um, I think it's pretty much inevitable it'll happen at some point. Uh, but maybe not this year. So although the Raspberry Pi Foundation existed before I did the MBA, you know, the, the, all of the commercial activity of Raspberry Pi has, kind of, has post-dated my involvement in, in the Cambridge Exec MBA. Um, I guess probably the biggest thing is, as a, as a, found, as a foundation, as a charitable foundation, um, trying to do a large-scale large business, you have a, lot of, you have a lot of challenges, in particular you have a working capital challenge. Um, we got to a point, uh, I think probably, um, uh, six months before launch, where we realized that you know, we had a profitable product. We had a, a product which we could make, that we could sell, and we could make a little profit on. But um, a conventional, kind of the very conventional um, approach to manufacturing that we were planning to take, you know, that we would buy components, pay a contract manufacturer to assemble them, sell it, and sell the product. Um, that was clearly not going to work for us. It became apparent to us that there was enough demand for the Raspberry Pi that we couldn't conceivably get our hands on enough working capital, given that we can't issue, we can't, you can't issue shares in the Raspberry Pi Foundation, it's a charity, that there was no conventional financial mechanism uh, that we could use to do that. So I guess one of the things that the course really provided was a kind of just a the, the kind of the confidence to look outside the box a little bit, the confidence to, to go and look for you know, other approaches to solving this problem. In our case, the way we solved the problem was to, go, was to change from a, a manufacturing strategy to, a, to a, li a licensing strategy. So Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi organization, doesn't make Raspberry Pis. Uh, it doesn't commission the manufacturer for Raspberry Pi. What it does is it designs the Raspberry Pi and maintains the Raspberry Pi brand and licenses those two things to partners 
in return for a royalty, who then go, who then provide the capital and the logistics and commission the manufacture. So it's just that kind of, I guess, that confidence to just you know look outside the box a little bit, just kind of try and solve the problem, try and solve a difficult problem in a in a an unconventional way.